Hi everybody, Jeff Simon here from Social Flight. Okay, first things first, what you're about to see in this video, this is stupid. Don't do this. Don't do this on a certified aircraft. Probably don't do this on an experimental aircraft. What we're going to play with is magnets and any mechanic, any aircraft designer, any avionics professional, pretty much anyone having to do with aviation will tell you the one thing that you never want near an aircraft are magnets. You don't want to magnetize the fuselage. You don't want to cause other problems that need to be degaussed. You don't want to mess with the avionics. They cause trouble with just about everything. But today, I'm going to play with magnets. As we talked about in the previous video, the T-51 Mustang from Titan Aircraft has this very cool innovative tail tow tube as it were basically it's a tube that comes out from here and allows you to grab on and move the aircraft around when you're on the ground and then just go and stow it back into place and um, you've, you've got this beautiful hard point because with tail draggers when you pull them in you're always moving the tail around and if you go to your local airport and you look at a bunch of tail draggers at least the ones that don't have handles built in somewhere what you'll find are dented dorsal fins dented horizontal stabilizers dents in the sides of the skin or problems with that hand, fingerprints hand marks all sorts of things because you don't want to do that you don't want to move your aircraft by pushing on a control surface or something like that and so it's really great that Titan has this tube that is just built in here in order to be able to hold you know hold and move the tail around now the design that comes from Titan for it is a good design it has end caps that are in place and a long spring that goes the length of it that basically allows you to pull it out and have this long spring extended move it around and then the spring kind of allows it to go back into place there's really three factors that were involved in not directly going with that the first is I kind of like having a flush skin I want I didn't like the idea of having end caps or something protruding out if I didn't have to do that the second is that the spring itself having to be that long a two-foot spring at rest that then has to go out to three feet or more and not have much tension on it ends up getting stretched out uh, so uh, you know it's it's kind of something that doesn't really age well over time and the third one is that I just like messing with things I mean I as you've seen from this build we want to put our touch on it and experiment I you know there's a lot of airplanes out there that you just build exactly from the plans and those are wonderful the experimental aircraft would not be booming as fast as it were if it were not for all of the great kit companies putting planes together that were just you know step a a b c and and all the holes are pre-drilled and you're just doing final assembly basically on it I love that I want to support that as much as possible but but for me, I like really experimenting in doing it. So, looked at the problem. We want to figure out how do we actually get something that would stay in one location and then be able to move when you need it to. And the answer that I came up with is, well, it's a magnet. So, we're going to experiment with that. What I've determined is that if I go and find a magnet that can go in the center of this tube that will have radial magnetism that isn't too much to will protect the rest of the aircraft but is strong enough so it won't get jettisoned out, it'll stay in place, then maybe there's something cool that I can do with this tail tube on our T-51D Mustang. Let's take a look. All right, so I found some parts that I can actually use to test this out and see if it's really going to work for us. Now this is the tube, the actual push tube that's used in the tail. This is the part that slides in and out and is supposed to be done on a spring. On McMaster car I found this magnet. The inside of the tube is three quarters of an inch and this magnet is exactly three quarters of an inch. Now this magnet's special and it is that if you look at most magnets that you would buy in this size the a magnetic field would go from one face to the other so essentially it's made to go up against a solid surface like that but not this one this one has the magnetic field going from a side to a side well what that means is that 
it's perfect for being able to embed it in here because it'll radially be uh, attracting something outside the tube. So I can take this and embed it inside. I'm going to actually do that by simply putting it inside a little bit of plastic um, that'll uh, put enough friction to keep it in place, but make it removable for my experiments. So I'm going to go kind of wrap this in, push this in, it takes a little bit of force here to get it in there, which is exactly what I want. And then I've got something that I can kind of push into place like this. Make sure it stays kind of oriented well and then just get it towards somewhere near where I'm going to want it to be uh, uh, fairly centered inside. So I can kind of experiment with it that way. Now, what's it going to actually grab on? Because the outer tube itself is also non-magnetic, it's also aluminum. Well, I found these washers and the inside diameter of this washer is one inch which is exactly what the outside diameter is of the tube that it slides through. Now we don't have the tube here, but we can experiment. I can find out where that magnet wound up by simply dropping it and boom, it grabs in place right at that location. I can even put another one on and test that. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna actually test the strength of the connection and its impact on the aircraft. So the first thing I'm going to do is go around, put it all in place and experiment and see, does it have any effect on a compass, anything else ferrous nearby that it could be impacting a field on. It is a small magnet. It doesn't have a big field around it, but I can actually see what, what range is it that it could affect something. And again, does it have any effect on my avionics uh, when it's in place? The nice thing about testing all this is again, this tube is completely removable. So even, it's even something that you could just remove and not even leave in place while you're flying if you wanted to. Um, so it's kind of an interesting thing in that regard. So let's get to that testing. All right, so let's run a test now to check the strength of this idea, to actually see how many g-forces the tail could experience before this tow tube uh, for the tail actually would get dislodged because the last thing of course we want is it to get dislodged so i've set up a rig here where the outer tube is put in a vertical orientation and just stabilized the inner tube that's here has the magnet inside it it's all uh, set up in there and i've clamped in place this stop that'll have on it uh, a varying number of these steel washers that we're going to put here. And so I have a total of five that I can do. There's one on right now and I'm going to run a test and see what happens. And it's going to start with uh, this box that contains uh, a steel bucking bar. Basically uh, I've put weights in these. So I actually know what I'm going to wind up with weight wise. So let's start by putting just this on and seeing with one washer, if it can actually hold this, and looks like it does. I can see it just barely moving, which is concerning. If I go and put on one of these heavy hex keys, we can see if oh, doesn't hold it. Okay, so one washer isn't going to cut it for that. So let me set the test back up there. I'll raise this uh, back up into position. Put that there. Now I'm going to put two washers on. That of course is gonna increase the ferrous metal that's on the outside for the magnet to actually attach to. So we've got two of those in place and now I'm gonna go and put that bucking bar box on and that holds. Next up, very heavy hex key that's going on. That seems to be okay. I'm gonna add a second next hex key. That one seems to be okay. Add a third. And that did not work. So we'll set it up again. That was with two washers in place. I'm gonna add a third washer to the stack. Okay, now we've got three washers in place. Putting the bucking bar on top. Starting to stack the hex keys on. All three are in place. Now there's a fourth. Whoop. 
Can't handle the fourth. Last thing, let's actually go and put a fourth washer in place. Okay, so now we've got four washers in place. I'm gonna put the bucking bar on top. The last setup with three washers it was able to handle pretty much all the hex keys that we put on. The, certainly the three hex keys went on. A fourth did not work. I'm putting on the three that we started with for the last test and that doesn't work. So I think what we've proven here, and I'll run one more test just to verify it, is that we our maximum amount of security that we have is when we have the three washers set up here. So let me do one more confirmation test of that. And that is putting this on. And now that has all the hex keys are three hex keys. It's very stable. Now, I weighed these so we know what we're actually dealing with. The bar itself with the magnet is five ounces. The setup with the keys and the bucking bar is approximately one and a half pounds. So what we're looking at here is essentially, if you do the math, four Gs, four times the five ounce bar at least in order to get you out to the amount that reaches a pound and a half plus the weight of the bar. So you would need to have four G's of lateral movement in the tail. That's yaw that's gonna happen. That's a lot of yaw before this tube would be able to be dislodged when we have it set with three of the washers in place. So that actually worked quite well. I think being able to uh, glue on three of these in place and then have it very easy to move in and then uh, out of the way is a design that we feel confident with um, won't actually have any risk of coming out in flight and posing a risk to the tail or the elevator. Okay, so let's go a little further with our fun with magnets game. Um, and see if there's any way to safely use a small magnet uh, or in anywhere in an aircraft. Uh, again, I know this is usually completely taboo, but the purpose of experimental aviation is to get out there and experiment, to see things, as long as it's within safe and controlled environment. And I certainly do not want to demagnetize part of the aircraft or have a problem where I have to go and demagnetize it to somehow uh, get rid of a problem that I induced. So that's why I'm going through all these steps, if nothing else than a learning experience, because we can always just pull it out, put the springs back in, and revert to that method. Now I've put a compass here, and just to demonstrate the strength of the magnetic field to experiment and uh, something interesting about that field. So if I go and I take the tube that now has the uh, magnet embedded in the center of it and I, and I have this set so that it's at north, I can have the tube pretty far away from the uh, actual compass and by rotating it I can see here that I can get a pretty big swing. Uh, uh, even from this degree. So I'm going from north at this point, and as I rotate it here, I'm about maybe 12 inches away from it. I get down to about 340 or so degrees, so about a 20 degree swing that way. If I rotate it the other way, the most I get back, same thing. So there's a variation the, from uh, north that's uh, up to uh, a 20 degree loss uh, from this distance. Now. That's significant, right? I mean, there's a lot of things that are gonna be within this distance here. However, there's something interesting to note. You can't, while you cannot actually shield magnetic forces in a traditional sense, like, like just putting some layer right over it in an effort to just kind of shield it that way as you would insul an insulator, um, you can do it by controlling where the forces are. So we're never going to have this inside the fuselage in the way that I just tested it around this. What we will have is we will have it inside the tube that's mounted in the aircraft. And in that case, it's going to be with these um, actual ferrous washers, which are used to actually index it inside. Now, what's interesting about that is I'm the same distance away now, and there's no movement on the compass at all. 
absolutely no movement. I'm rotating it, nothing's happening, the compass is dead centered at this point. So if I start moving it closer while rotating it, because we've got a polar magnet here, um, and so it could be the direction of the magnet, I get closer and closer and I don't see any deviation of the compass until I get about here, which I would say is less than six inches. So once I get within six inches, I can now see a 10 degree swing of variation depending on, the, uh, on how it's oriented. And that again, I've got to get within six inches in its stowed position to see that small kind of ten, little bit 10 degree swing. And that varies based on the number of actual washers that we use. If I do that with one washer, I'm gonna get more of a swing. If I do it with four washers, I get less. We determined during our testing that three washers was optimal. Four washers kind of just left it where it was. Um, and so if I want from the perspective of shielding to actually contain the field better than I could go with four washers. Now what you're really doing here is not shielding in the way that you insulate something, but what you're doing is containing the field. You're actually providing an easier path for the magnetic flux from the magnet for those fields to collapse back and return back to the magnetic source. So by having that in place and making it easier for everything to stay tight, we keep it from actually uh, radiating further and then causing problems with things like cables, structure of the aircraft, or anything like that. So the last thing is that I went and did a test of the avionics itself when all this was in place. I did test, and which again is easy to do because I can put everything in place and then remove the tube that has the magnet in and see if there is any change by even one degree or a tenth of a degree, anything, through our avionics which uh, are, should be mounted far enough away in general. But uh, what I determined through that is there was, I couldn't see anything, not one degree, not half a degree, no change whatsoever do, uh, based on the position of the magnet. So between having the washers in place, having everything kept in the center there, it looks like it won't impact anything. The other thing I would say is in the location that we are uh, storing this, uh, that where the actual uh, centered location where it's going to stay in the aircraft when you're not you know pulling it out to use it um, there's no wires nearby uh, the only thing there are rudder cables that are about six inches away from that uh, from its centered location and that's it there's nothing else going on in there so I will uh, follow up I'm going to read the comments from all of you to see what your thoughts are before we go and implement something like this but um, it just seems like a, a very cool, simple way of doing things. And so far, I'm not seeing any harm. Now let's do the final part where we drill the holes in the skins, get all this mounted, and see how it works. All right, the hole location was marked in the previous video when we showed how to actually transpose that hole. Now I'm gonna open up the hole, bring the tube through, and then we can uh, move on to testing the, uh, how this whole tail push tube works. All right, so the skin is on and the hole has been drilled in the proper location. The outer tube, which gets bonded in the fuselage, is in place here along with our optimal stack of three washers in place. And this is our tail push tube that we use. And I can demonstrate this. You just slide it into place. And then what's nice is if you watch really closely, you'll see it just 
kind of snaps away from my fingers to the first location. This is where you grab it and actually move the tail. This is actually now grabbing on the mount area that's in, built into the frame of the fuselage. Push it a little bit further with one finger, get in here just as I start to get close, it'll get sucked away from me and boom, gets stowed away. And to get it out, all I need to do is either push from either side or pull, um, uh, and uh, then that, it'll all be set. Uh, now what's nice is you can get little plastic caps that'll go on the end, and that'll make it so you just push from one side and it'll open it up on the other side. So I'm gonna experiment with that a little bit, decide if it makes sense to have caps or have some other design. But right now I can just pull this out, stops right where I want it to, or get sucked right in. All right, that's it for another cool building stage on our Titan T51D Mustang. I love coming up with cool little things like this. They're just good experiments. Tell us in the comments below what you think about the idea, even in a limited fashion, of breaking that taboo and using a magnet anywhere in an aircraft. We did testing. We feel like it's uh, safe and going to work okay without causing other problems, but always open to, to learning from that. For us, it's a clean, sleek design and should be fun to use moving forward. Be sure to check out socialflight.com and the free Social Flight mobile apps for Apple and Android devices. We have tens of thousands of aviation events and destinations, so many things going on. Every Tuesday evening, we have our Social Flight live show with fantastic, inspirational guests from all around aviation. And we have all of that. Please subscribe. You can see all the latest happening. And and if you play our fly to win challenge by using the mobile app and going to airports and getting points for checking in, you can win some amazing prizes from our sponsors. Just very, very cool things. We're just here to support general aviation and I hope that all of you get a chance to get out there and fly and support general aviation just like we try to do. Until next time, I'm Jeff Simon for Social Flight. Blue skies. Hey everybody, one last footnote at the end of this video. I should mention, this is not the only magnet in this airplane. When we look at all the other motors going on in here, like the servo motor for the autopilot or the motor that's uh, here for the hydraulic pump, turns out when I go and I take my, that compass and I go around those areas, they have very strong magnetic currents going around them as well. So there's a lot of magnetic fields in here uh, I suspect that uh, this probably is going to be the smallest one that there is. But meanwhile, boy, this is just so much fun. You just pull it out, put it there, sucks it back. I could do this for days.